always do. Oh, there we go. Try to include them. Um, in this case, we're, we're doing it out of this necessity and have to do it immediately, which wasn't my plan. My plan was, you know, we occasionally step out and let an alternate step in in our stead. Uh, that way they get uh, the, the participation experience. And in this case, Steve gets to participate because we don't know where Tom is. So oh, wow. let's, okay. let's, uh, let's go ahead and start. Um, yep. To do the uh, role, I may have to, just to follow the statutes as I understand them now that we did our Saturday thing, <laughs> every time we uh, start a new hearing, uh, I'm going to mention who sitting for that hearing. So in the first instance, it's myself, Lee Levy, Marion Altman, Daniel Sanchik, and Steve Ferguson, who are all present and ready to go. So who do we have on first, John? Uh, we have first would be um, on the agenda is 34. Is deal with the 34 bird, right? Yeah, that's the first one on the list. So might yeah. as well get that out of the way. Um, we really don't need to vote on this. This is something the chairman could do on his own, but right. let's just vote for the grins. Um, those of us that are here uh, need to just approve the fact that they're being delayed till April. They didn't, they didn't want to come tonight. They're using the reason that we didn't have five members available. Uh, that's a little sketchy, but nevertheless, they can go to April. They're out of time in April. We will have to hear them. They will have to proceed or we'll just have to have it uh, either lapse in time or be turned down because they're not participating. That's correct. Right? Mm -hmm. So everybody okay with uh, April? If you're not, raise your hand. I'm fine with it. Yeah, okay. I'm fine with it. Great. Everybody's done. Terrific. There we go. The, uh, the next item is um, a continuation. It is the vehicle license application, repair license. Uh, Lee, are you ready to go for this? I'm ready to, to go. <clears throat> Very good. Item 23-0216-01, RJR Northeast LLC proposed motor vehicle repairer License application in neighborhood business zone. Property located at 44 Van Zandt Street, District 3, Block 39, Lot 2. Request the applicant seeks approval from the board for repair services K7 state license for Express Auto Works proposed maintenance and repair of new and used cars. Background, previous variances listed were actually rated, related to the motor vehicle approval through the ZBA. The existing building contained several overhead garage doors. In 2004, permits were issued for Enterprise Rental Cars and JN Phillips Auto Glass. Uh, analysis and findings. The board will act as an agent of the state to decide whether this is an appropriate use in this location. In granting the license, you are affirming this is an appropriate use. This applicant will also have to make an application for special permit to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I think we've covered quite a few times, and we just covered it, which is this is uh, we're proving the location. So if it was next to childcare, uh, next to a hospital, there might be some doubts in our mind as whether we should approve that location. Um, in this instance, uh, our staff has done some research and uh, there are five vehicle repair uh, businesses that were on Van Zant. One has left and the new applicant has, is trying to move into, I think the same exact location as the one that left. Yes. Um, a, a quick analysis by them is that uh, parking is not an issue. There's more than sufficient parking. So pretty much <coughs> what I wondered about has been handled. Anybody else? 
Well, I've been by the location. I find no objection. I mean, it's an area that seems, I don't, want, I don't want to use the word prone, but is it, it contains other automotive oriented businesses. Yeah. So I feel it's appropriate use. Anyone else have any questions or thoughts? So the, what zoning used to handle this and we started handling it, what, two months ago? Started? I can't remember, it's pretty recent. Go ahead, Marilyn. I was just going to ask because I saw this letter from Phil Mazuko with yeah. all the questions. He has a um, he has property. He owns um, he has tenants. I'm just curious: was that ever addressed? Is that an issue? I was by the property. I've been by it a few times, but I was by it today again. I mean, it certainly is prone to that. Are these are his concerns? Um, well, we've had other instances where people uh, express concerns that were tangential. Um, when you come right down to it, like somebody was objecting to us approving a location that lied, lay, lied between um, a shell station and a, a repair shop for a transmission. Mm -hmm. um, somehow that didn't seem like an appropriate objection. Mm -hmm. Then there was an objection about uh, groundwater being affected. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not something we handle. So we handle is the general location makes sense and uh, all the rest of that stuff is handled by other people. We're pretty limited in what we're looking at. Okay, no, I, I don't disagree. I mean, it's it, it kind of is what it is. I mean, I just went by to just kind of make sure I was looking at the thing I thought I was, so. Yeah. Well, I, I had questions about what there was a sufficiency of parking. Um, sometimes with shops like this, when you count the employees, uh, the customers, and even though you're not supposed to put the work outside, the work in progress, um, you can have a problem accommodating that. In this case, there is no problem, and uh, the shop can uh, accommodate all that. It's not a problem. So I'm, I'm happy with it. Thank you. Alrighty. So all in favor, <laughs> we could move this one on. Let's move uh, on to our next item. Uh, did, is there somebody that has is online and had an objection or they wanted to make a supporting comment, either one? John, do you see any hands raised? We no should hands. talk about it. Nope. You know, when we start out, we usually tell you all about how to do this. And just let's boil it down this simple. This is Zoom. If you're on in Zoom, there's a, me a method of using it on your phone. I think it was dial nine, was it? Uh, raise your hand to say you yep. want to talk. And if you're actually using a laptop or a desktop, uh, you'll see screen and you can uh, you know, raise your hand and we can see you doing it. Um, Beyond that, there isn't a whole lot going on. Most of the stuff that we talk about in the intro um, really isn't that applicable. There is a requirement for us to identify ourselves when we uh, hear each application, which as of tonight, we will start that practice. Okay. So who's, who might still be, you know, the applicant really doesn't need to rebut anything because everybody's pretty much in favor of this. We'll vote later when we get into uh, that aspect of the meeting, but I don't see anybody objecting at the moment. So um, if uh, anybody, uh, the applicant wanted to hang around and see us vote later, that's great. I'm pretty sure it's gonna pass. Uh, next item is. Okay, may I make a comment? If Mr. Herman would please sit down, your image moving across the screen is disturbing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the next item is 23-0316-01, Bank of America. Variance of front yard setback required 45 feet from center line, proposed 29.92 feet, section 11852C, 
for electric vehicle charging equipment in business zone number two, property located at 222 Main Street, Dix District 1, Block 103, Lot 13. Request. The applicant seeks variance of setback that is required from the center line of the street for EV charging power equipment. The bank located at 220 Main Street owns and utilizes three adjoining parcels for building and parking. The subject parcel contains most of the parking for the bank. Analysis and findings. Even EV charging stations are an emerging use. Staff has determined that the charging dispensers are exempt from setbacks. However, the supporting power equipment that must be meet required setbacks. Equipment cannot be installed at the parking area at 4 Ward Street as that parcel is located in a resident zone C. Parceling and lot configuration appear to create a zoning hardship. Staff recommends that any approved approval be conditioned with requiring screening of the charging dispensers if they are to have video screens incorporated into the design as in the example below. Mr. Chairman, you may proceed. Do we have somebody representing um, the Bank of America or the property? Pardon me. My name is Rebecca Sharp. I work for the SAI group. Uh, we're the design builder for the project. Uh, the project owner is Electrify America. And I'm joined this evening with my design lead, Chris Jansic, who may be able to assist answer any questions you have. Um, you can start with telling me who the project owner is and their relationship to Bank of America. Absolutely, I'd be happy to. Um, Electrify America is the project owner and the equipment owner. Um, they are a tenant of Bank of America and have partnered with uh, corporate entities across the nation um, that primarily serve a retail uh, uh, use um, for partnering for these uh, placement for these EV charging stations. It's uh, multi-beneficial. Um, Bank of America has expressed a commitment to uh, maintaining and, and meeting certain sustainability measures within the communities they serve. This is an avenue for them to do so. Um, and it's a convenience factor for their, for their employees, for their customers, as well as just members of the community. Electrify America, I believe started this project, um, I wanna say going five years now, and is probably closing in on 1000 sites built across the country. Um, predominantly that work began over the U.S. highway system. And in the intervening years, they've gone back into metropolitan areas and are filling in areas that are underserved. We as the design builder are responsible for design, permit <coughs> coordination, utility coordination, and ultimately construction. Okay. You insure it as well? Yes. Okay. Um, just so that we get everything straight, we have Andy Conroy, Lee Levy, Marilyn Altman, Daniel Sanchek, and Steve Ferguson sitting in on this application. There's only one other attendee, uh, Tom Parkas. He just joined us, and he'll join us for the, the one following. Um, and go right ahead and um, make your pitch if you have one. Uh, I think we understand your relationship to Bank of America and in general, what kind of service you're providing. Excellent. Well, this project in, in particular, as the application indicates, proposes installing four <laughs> charging dispensers in the existing parking lot of the Bank of America. This is the portion of the parcel adjacent to Ward Street. Um, we're going into existing parking stalls. There's a minimal parking loss. Um, we have one side, one stall that is oversized, which will result in the loss of one parking space. Um, fortunately for this parcel, there's more than adequate parking for, um, for, the, for the use. Um, however, it is the equipment pad that creates the, the burden for us. Um, and if you'll allow me, just walk th through that process, that technology for a moment. Um, 
the charging dispensers will be powered by a dedicated transformer. Um, that transformer will power the switch gear that is mounted onto that equipment pad and then feeds into our power cabinets. At the power cabinets, that alternating current that originates from the transformer is converted to DC current. These are level three or direct current fast charging dispensers. So your general average motorist would be able to fully charge their vehicle in under 30 minutes. Um, the equipment pad, it's required to be relatively close to the dispensers because of that energy transfer. Um, and we have looked at this from every possible design angle to try to move that equipment pad out of that setback. And unfortunately, because of uh, the lock configuration, there's, there's really no place for it other than where, where we proposed it. Uh, the staff recommendation was if we approve this, and, and we might, um, that the uh, stations and transformers be uh, screened. The charging station itself, <laughs> does it have any lights on it? It does. It has some LED lighting um, that's color specific to Electrify America, the, the equipment owner. Um, it's dimmable and it's actually, and it's able to be turned off remotely. Um, it's, I don't have a, a, a foot candle measurement for you for that LED lighting, um, but it is something if it's a concern and I understand as it's abutting a street, um, that that's something that um, we may ask Electrify America to dim those. Well, part of the concern is the zone you're in. Um, I, I full well recognize that we're going to need more and more charging stations. Um, and we're going to have to figure out how to handle all this. But in the meantime, if we're in the wrong zone for it, then um, we have to extend ourselves a little bit to allow it. And that would require the applicant to extend themselves <laughs> and provide the screening if needed. Certainly. Um, because of where the equipment pad is proposed, um, there's marginal, marginal space. Um, we have looked at the possibility of um, installing a composite wood fence um, around the equipment pad. Um, we'd, have to, we'd have to work out that design and make sure that it fits. Um, but it's, I think that that would be our best option in terms of the space that's available. And going to the staff report um, specifically about the advertising on the dispensers. I just wanted to address that very quickly. Um, on the dispensers themselves, it's a, it's a 15 inch touch screen um, that just provides instructional information for the user, um, status report of the charging um, session. There's, there's no advertising. Okay. Questions I will assume board? that these charging stations are able to accept uh, a majority of the systems that are available on EVs? That's an excellent question and thank you for asking. These are universal charging stations. Um, so they would accommodate or be compatible with the vast majority of vehicles on the road today or that are anticipated coming off the manufacturing lines. Would you update them in the future to make sure that it remains universal? Absolutely. Uh, the technology is, is, is emerging incredibly rapidly. For instance, just two years ago, this equipment pad that we're discussing right now would have been twice the size it is now. Um, they've been able to shrink the equipment required to operate these dispensers. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's a work in process and it's going very quickly. I wouldn't be surprised to see additional technologies come out um, you know, within the next 18 months. Uh, any other questions from the board? Do we have anybody in the public that wants to uh, say nay to this or to support it? I just have one question. Is this a, is this a one-off uh, or would you, will you be working with Bank of America at other locations or is this a novel situation? Oh, a wonderful question. As a matter of fact, we probably have right now, I want to say over 20 sites with Bank of America that are in the process of either permit approval or actual construction. Um, Bank of America has made a significant commitment um, to making this infrastructure available in the communities they serve. Um, other partners that Electrify America works with is Walmart, uh, Target, Simon Property Groups, uh, grocery stores. 
uh, the ideal situation is someplace where normal people are going to travel to um, throughout their day um, and just run in, go grab a birthday card, something like that, and have the convenience of being able to charge their vehicle while they're doing that. Tom, by the way, isn't sitting on the board for your application, but Tom is a member of the public and he, he has he had the question. Thank you. Uh, he actually, Tom asked, actually asked my question, so. All right, terrific. What, I'll, I do have another question. What is the possibility or likelihood of one of these charging stations being vandalized? It's a very, very good question. Um, they're secured. Um, the aperture to be able to open the dispenser to get into and, and provide maintenance is locked. I don't, I'm not aware of any cases where somebody's broken into it, um, nor have I heard of any other vandalism. These are in secured parking lots in terms of having security systems, security cameras, those types of things. Um, so I that may have something to do with the the fact that I haven't heard of any. Okay, thank you. Where's your, um, I take it that you have power going to these uh, recharger stations 24-7. Uh, and you must have some sort of central control over them in case you sense something <laughs> and you need again, to shut one down. Again, excellent question. The uh, electrical current doesn't actually begin uh, flowing from the dispenser to the vehicle until the charging cable is actually connected to the vehicle. Um, and when there's no active charging session occurring, it's basically inert. Um, and they are able to, to remotely operate those dispensers and shut them down in the case of an emergency. All right, that's really what I wanted to know. Um, that if something doesn't work the way it's supposed to, that and some, uh, somebody damaging your station could cause that. Uh, sure. And you, you would be able to sense it and then respond to it. There's also a main uh, service disconnect located in the switch gear that shuts the entire system down. All right, that's good. I will assume, correct me if I'm not, that uh, there is no fee for using the charging stations. No, sir, I'm glad that that's also another good question. No, sir, uh, the users are charged per time they okay. purchase a certain amount of time for charging. Um, and again, as I said, for most vehicles, uh, they can have a full charge delivered in under 30 minutes. Most vehicles, quite frankly, are not capable of receiving that energy transfer at that rate. Um, this is These are be, being built for the future. Um, but for instance, if a uh, motorist uh, needs about 15 minutes of charge, they would purchase 15 minutes of charge. And then um, once that charging session is, is completed, the electrical uh, transfer ends. And then that motorist through uh, to usually a, an app on your phone is notified that your charging session has been completed. So if you're in the grocery store and you're checking out and your charge is, has been completed, you're notified of that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. John, did you see anybody raise their hand? I take that as a no since you're muted. There we go. I'm back. Um, no hands. Okay. Uh, with that in mind, um, we will vote later. Let's move on to the next application. Okay. Uh, 03 16 02. Uh, application 23-0316-02, Charles and Michelle Green, variance of height, allowed 31 feet mid point roof, 39 peak roof, proposed 32.8 mid roof, 39.9 peak roof, proposed Stories allowed two and a half, proposed three, and lot coverage allowed 2,085 square feet, proposed 2,488 square feet. Section 34C, 
for raising an existing single family dwelling to make flood compliant in B resident zone. Property located at 70 Roten Avenue, District 6, Block 9, Lot 36. Request the applicant seeks variances to lift an existing home located in the flood zone. Background, this, ho this home was originally built in 1950. Variances were previously granted for setbacks for both the dwelling and the detached garage. The most recent was granted in 2003. Analysis and findings. If this request is granted, the existing home will be raised and made FEMA flood compliant. While the proposed elevated deck will expand the maximum lot coverage allowance, it does meet setbacks and will have a minimal impact on overall massing of the structure. There is no expansion of the primary structure proposed. Mr. Chairman. Uh, who's representing them tonight? If I uh, if I may, there, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this one actually given some instructions on from uh, Tammy, uh, the applicant, uh, Attorney Adam Blank, uh, representing counsel for the owners, uh, has asked that once the public hearing or the matter has been opened, uh, he would kindly and respectfully ask uh, for a continuance as he is uh, not around. I hear he's on a nice beach somewhere. Just for that, I think we should turn them down. <laughs> we could send the marshals out and arrest them. Um, <laughs> Constable Bondi would absolutely love that. He's asking he me would. to send them more exotic places, but uh, yeah, I, sure I, I think I don't think we have the budget for that. Um, we could ask them to do it without pay. So um, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure he might want to do it. Um, but know, all, right. all of the all of the jesting aside. Mm -hmm. um, if the attorney can't make it and he's representing them, then uh, you know I don't think we have a lot of choice but to grant a continuance. Yep. And I think we could do that right now, not have to wait till later. So yep. uh, all in favor of granting the continuance, raise your hand. Aye. All right. Um, it is continued to next month meeting. Next up is. Um, Mr. Chairman, before I read this, uh, you should uh, take the roll call of all that will be hearing this item. Yeah. Um, I don't think we heard the item. We opened it and didn't close it. The folks that participated in opening it were Andy Conway, Lee Levy, Marilyn Altman, Daniel Sanchek, and Steve Ferguson. And for the next item, Tom uh, Barkus is going to join us. And for hearing that item, it's Andy Conroy, Lee Levy, Marilyn Altman, Daniel Sanchek, and Tom Barkus. Okay. The next item is 23-0316-03. Scott Herman, variance of front setback. Required 30 feet proposed 5.5 section 118-35C and to allow parking within the front setback section 118-1220J and reduction of parking space dimensions, 19 foot depth required proposed 18 foot depth section 118-1230B1 for proposed new single family dwelling in C residence zone property located at 289 East Avenue, District 3, Block 42, Lot 33. Request, the applicant seeks variance of front yard setback to construct a new FEMA flood compliant single family dwelling. The proposal as configured what? will also requires variance to allow parking within the front setback for one garage space, one exterior parking pad. 
A revised survey was submitted okay. yesterday, obvi obviating the need for parking depth dimension variance. Background, the lot was part of a grant of special exception in 2011 to develop non-conforming lots under same ownership. In 2015, front setback variance was granted for this adjoining, for the adjoining lot at 287 East Avenue and a subsequent single family dwelling was constructed. Analysis and findings. The proposed structure will be built flood compliant. The allowable building envelope and sloping nature of the lot could be considered zoning hardship around the board granting the variances. Mr. Chairman. All right, um, who's representing? Uh, myself, Scott Herman, the applicant and architect, John Roundtree. All right, I see you both. Um, so which one of you wants to- Well, start? I'll just kind of give a quick overview and turn it over to John. So. I acquired this property in January of this year, and my idea here is to build a house for myself. So I have no interest in renting it or selling it. So we put a lot of care into getting this house right. And we've come up with a proposal that's conforming despite the very small lot size with all the rules save for the front. And we'll discuss the front in detail uh, with John. Okay, um, I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully, let's see. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Looks good. Can you see it? Yep. Yes. Okay. So this is the um, this is the front of the house. This is the um, uh, elevation uh, from from East Avenue. Uh, and let's see if I can uh, bring up a different one. Hold on a second. This is the one I wanted. Okay, everybody can see that. This is the um, this is the view from East Avenue. It's a, uh, a two-story house, and the um, uh, we'd be providing two off-street parking spaces in the front here. Um, the uh, house is set back uh, six, six and a half feet from the property line, uh, and it lines up fairly well with the houses on either side. This is obviously a rendering, so this is an actual site. <laughs> this isn't the actual site, but it looks, this is what the house would look like. Um, so the house would be, um, uh, the bulk of the house would be 15 feet. This part of the house would be 15 feet from the property line. The um, uh, house would then slope to the back, and I'll try to pull that up. Hold on a second. Okay. This is what it would look like from the back of the house. So you can obviously see there's about a there's about a 10 foot drop from the street to the uh, to the property by the water. There's an existing uh, <coughs> seawall here. So we'd be about 10 feet back from the seawall. Uh, there would be a small deck, which would really just be for access to the to the ground level through a staircase. The um, lower level would be not not inhabited. Lower level would just be for for storing um, yard equipment, things like that. There would be flood vents as required for um, for allowing water to come and go. And the um, I'll bring up the. Uh, that's what it looks like. The stop. Let's see. Let's see here. Um, um, trying to find the plan. Do, do you all have the? Um, do you have the uh, plan or the um, the site plan? No, we don't. We don't. Okay. I I could uh, put that up on the screen here. I do. Yeah, have could you? I'm on. having trouble. Please, I'm yeah, trying I to share this. Up here. Yeah, if you could. Hey, everybody, see that? Yep. Okay. Yes. 
There you go. Oh, so good. just let me know up, down, yeah. side to side. Yeah, you can, oh, that's good. Yeah, 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 this is helpful. So this shows the uh, site plan. These are the two um, uh, parking spaces. This has been corrected. So there's not uh, this offset now. We push the house back a foot so that this is a full 19 foot parking space in the front. Um, this is the uh, uh, setback is six and a half, not five and a half here. Uh, it's very close to the, the neighbors. You can't see the neighbor's house, but the neighbor's house is five and a half feet from the property line. So it lines up with the existing house next door. Um, we have one garage, one single car garage. And um, uh, what else? Stairs going down. Uh, uh, talk about the parking, John, on the on front of the garage. Right, right. So right. So there's so right. There's two. Well, there's the garage, one car, and then this is one space and there's a second space right here. So you could park three cars off off the street for this house. Um, and uh, you want to just go through the architectural drawings real quickly, Tom, if you could just scroll down. You can kind of see uh, maybe start with the uh, floor plan. Um, there you go. Yeah, it's getting there. There we go. Yeah. So floor plan, you can see uh, it's an open first floor, open floor plan. Uh, the whole house is about 1700 square feet. Uh, the second floor has three bedrooms, uh, two and a half bathrooms total, uh, single car garage, pretty standard, you know, size house for this neighborhood. Um, you know, open plan with some windows for the view. Obviously, the site is an excellent site for, uh, for views of the water. Um, we think it's going to be an improvement to the to the neighborhood. Um, we meet all the regulations except for the setback, uh, so we're we're asking for a setback variance. Uh, and um, I don't think I have anything else. You can go see the elevations. So this is a lower level. Is this unfinished space here uh, with flood vents, uh, um, stair a stair going up to the first floor. Um, and then just yeah, I'll go I'll go down to the uh, there we go yeah go section so you know here you know we're 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 within the height limitations uh, from the average grade which was calculated by uh, Land Tech um, and then uh, if you keep going down to the sections it'll show kind of show you the uh, uh, keep going keep going so these are the these are the building sections you can see uh, on the on the right. Uh, section through this site with this steep, you know, steep embankment going down to the water um, with the um, average grade uh, 11.2. That's a little bit off. It's actually 11.1, .1, but that shouldn't change the fact that we're meeting the regulations. Um, and um, all the mechanicals will be above the uh, flood elevation by a foot. And um, I don't really have anything else, uh, Scott, unless you want to add anything. Uh, just that we made criteria for two and a half stories. I think that's that's about okay. it. Yes, we meet the criteria, right, for two and a half stories. And the mechanicals will all be above, above the floodplain elevation. That's all I have. Any okay. questions? John, did you have any issues with this? Did I have any issues with it when what in terms of what? No, no. Our <laughs> our staff, our staff person. Oh, it's your job. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey. John Rodri. It was a challenging, it was a challenging <laughs> site to design a house on. I'll say that from my standpoint. Yeah, uh, there's yeah, they're absolutely correct. Uh, you took a quick look at the plans. Um, they meet uh, a rarity in a flood zone, they meet the height, uh, number of stories. Uh, as a matter of fact, if it wasn't for the parking in the front setback and the front setback variance required. Uh, this house would have been approved over the counter. Yeah, okay. Because I was kind of wondering, it seemed like it would be. Um, uh, any questions from the board? Uh, I don't. I think it's a very good solution to a series of difficult problems. Yeah. Yeah, one, one being next to the water and the other being a very small lot. Anybody else uh, have a question? How about somebody in, in the public that would raise their hand and uh, want to comment either pro or con? I've got no hands raised here. 
Oh, and for the record, the uh, all the abutting properties were notified. Uh, and we do have a cot, those were given to uh, yeah, they have the staff there. We have them in the file. All right, good. Oh, hang on. We have uh, oh, we got one. Uh, we have a Megan Svensson. Uh, let's see here. And ask to unmute. There we go. Uh, Megan, you're Ron. Uh, just uh, identify yourself, uh, right. address, and name. Yeah, I'm, Me I'm Megan Svensson. I'm your new neighbor, Mr. Herman. Um, I'm Hi. on East Avenue. Um, I am, um, you know, I, I, I went through the plans today with John. Um, so a lot of our concerns were um, put to rest by, you know, and, and we don't have an issue with the variances. Um, I do want to just point out two things that were the one thing that was of concern just for future. If there's any other um, construction that goes on. It looks like right now you're planting grass, but that area has um, a, 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 floods a lot. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that there's no structure that gets put that would go higher than our current uh, seawall and patio because that would cause flood flooding into our our home um and so I don't see that planned I just wanted to get that in the record that's one thing that we are are concerned about especially given the uh, house on the other side having a very large patio um so we're, we're we were very glad to see that you weren't doing something similar um and then the only other comment and there just because there was no way to tell you and I I pretty sure the previous owners did not share this information before you purchased. Um, but your seawall is disintegrating. And um, when I redid mine, you, the previous owner spoke to the um, contractor that I was using about what needed to be done. Um, and it's pretty significant. And you probably need to address that before you start building just because there's gonna, if, if you do decide to fix it, um, there's, you're, you're gonna have to get the equipment down there to do it before you build the house. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, let me ask real quickly, if you're facing East Avenue, mm -hmm. are you to the left or the to, or to the right of the applicant's we're, house? We are to the, the left, we're over here, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so Scott, your architect could tell us what, how he's uh, handled the slope and, and drainage issue. Well, the slope is, the slope basically slopes down from the front all the way to the back. It's a consistent slope. The um, drainage will be handled. This, this plan doesn't show the, the uh, stormwater drainage system, but that will be engineered by Land Tech. Uh, so there will be stormwater management on site. Um, we haven't addressed the seawall yet. It's a, it's a good point uh, the neighbor makes, um, but that will be something we will be talking about and working on. Um, and I will have a structural engineer involved with, with the retaining. There are a number of retaining walls that we have to design, obviously at the driveway level, um, that, which will be engineered um, you know, adequately. But uh, we will be taking care of all, you know, all runoff from the roofs will be handled on site with um, water management. All right, um, thank you. Do we have anyone else that has raised their hand? Not hearing <coughs> any. Um, nope, I have nothing going through, giving everybody a few seconds here, but uh, no, nothing. Okay, um, with that understood, I think it's time to uh, move on, we have uh, board action on A through E, which is the stuff we were doing tonight. A obviously is passed on to April. Um, C is, no, D is passed on to April also. So we'll begin with uh, item B, the motor vehicle repair license application, uh, looking for a location approval. Um, uh, anybody want to move the item? I typically don't. I'll do it if I have to. I'll make a motion that we approve item C 23-0318-01, Bank of America. I have no objection to it. And I think that 
as presented, it no, we're not to solve a problem that we're all going to have in the future. Lee, Lee take Great. a breath. We're on one. <laughs> okay. Uh, motor vehicle application item B. B. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, item number two three dash zero two one six dash zero one. I make a motion we uh, approve this site for motor vehicle use. Yeah. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, Marilyn, Marilyn, I have a second. Uh, so it's moved by Lee. Give me a second to make a notation. And uh, Marilyn seconded it. And then all in favor, raise your hand. Aye. Aye. And uh, Tom, you're not voting. Not on this one. No. Okay, gotcha. Got everybody. So that we were unanimous in our vote. Um, the next item is 230316-01 Bank of America 222 Main Street. And I'll continue my motion previously. I would like to move that we approve this item. Um, we're going to be seeing more and more of these coming online. Yeah, I think we will. Do we have a second? I'll second. Danielle seconds it. Um, any further discussion? By the way, our procedure kind of wonky. Um, as you are on boards and commissions or sitting on the city council, you move an item and then you discuss it. You don't discuss it and then move it. But anyway, just we sort of do it backwards. But either way, I need to ask at the end of a first and a second if there's further discussion. And seeing none and hearing none, um, we should vote on this now. All in favor, raise your hand. And we have unanimous. <clears throat> Next item, Lee. Um... Oh. Did we skip D? I believe we did. John? Did we, yeah, skip we, skip, we skip D? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, that one we uh, agreed to move to the uh, April hearing okay. calendar. Okay. Yeah, Adam Blank couldn't make the meeting. So, yes, yeah. he's on a beach. <laughs> uh, then the last one, this the second the last one, um, rather than Steve Ferguson, it was uh, Tom Parkus sitting on. Yes. E, item 23-0316-03, Scott Herman, property located at 289 East Avenue. The last one we heard and um, I kind of appreciate not going backwards. Anyway, that, all, uh, all in favor of it, assuming there's no further discussion because we just handled this one. If there is discussion, tell me now. I have all no right. complaints about I, this. I need, a, I need a, um, somebody to move it and a second. I'll make the motion that we approve this item as uh, submitted and discussed tonight. Tom, you want to second it? I will second it. Yes. All right. So Tom Parker second. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand. Aye. One, two, three, four. Who am I missing? One, two, three, four, five. We got it. All right. Unanimous. So we're moving on and thank, you're gonna- Thank you, everyone. I'm signing off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what uh, we have next to handle is the administrative stuff. That is correct. You got some minutes. Uh, let me get Tom's vote in here. All right, I messed up now. Right. Not a problem. And we have um, a couple of 
minutes to approve January 19th, 2023. Uh, has everybody, I don't want to move them together. I want to move them one at a time. Um, so I'll move that for um, discussion purposes. Is there a second? Second. All right, Lee seconds it. Uh, are there any corrections or changes that you see needed? I didn't find anything. Yeah, I, I speed read it and I didn't spot anything. And your name is spelled rightly. So. I go through every set of meetings, <laughs> okay. minutes. All right, with that in mind, um, if you weren't there, tell me now, because I didn't go through the list as to who was there or not there. All right, so uh, all in I'm favor, there. you were there or not there? Yeah, I was there. Okay. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand. Tom, you can raise your hand. And Lee, and that's it. So unanimous approval. And then we go to the February minutes, February 16th, 2023. Um, I'll move them. Any second? All right, Marilyn seconds. Uh, any changes, discussion? Uh, I Marilyn, have no issue. You're silenced. So if you're saying something, I can't hear you. Oh, you can't get it to unhook itself? <laughs> okay, I, I don't know if I can read lifts on Zoom. <laughs> anyway, so um, I think it looked fine to me. Again, I speed read it. I didn't see a problem. It, it was generally correct. And that's all it has to be. Um, all in favor, raise your hand and we'll pass those and we're good. Do we have another item? I do have a couple of comments before we adjourn. Um, if everybody would let me know that you attended the Saturday training and so that I know that if we missed anybody. Raise your, Marilyn, did you miss it? Marilyn missed it. Lee, did you no, miss we, it? No, we were there. We were there. Good. Yeah, just we're raise there. your hand if you missed it. Oh. That way I know there's a minority of one or two people that missed it. Um, I don't know if Lion made it, I'll ask him by email directly, but if everybody else made it, then uh, we're hundred percent because I did ask Steve and Ben uh, both and they had uh, made the meeting, so I'm good. So that would mean, uh, John, other than knowing about Lion, whether he made it, that we're hundred uh, percent until he tells us whether he made it. That's fantastic. That's Beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. Glad you all I hope you didn't fall asleep during the meeting. It was rather long. Yeah. And it did cover everything under the sun. So. If it makes, it makes you guys feel any better, right? Go through that every five years. That makes you feel any better. Oh, that, that does make me feel a little better. Yes. <laughs> I have to do it again. It's the same, basically the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to do it annually. Thank I probably guys. won't be around in five years. So. Oh, come on, Lee. No, I mean, me, I'm, I may be around, but maybe not on the board, so. You'll be on that beach with Attorney Blank. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think the board will change in five years' time. I'm, I'm positive of it. Uh, anyhow, with that in mind, is there any other comments for the evening? I'm welcoming Steve and Ben, and Ben sat in listening rather than participating, and Steve participated uh, on, what was it, three items, four items? Yeah. And we're all set. If you got nothing else, I wish you a remainder of an evening. That I hope it's nice and you enjoy it and you get to watch TV or play with the kids or pet the dog or whatever. <laughs> if, if, okay. nobody, if nobody has anything else to do, they just notified me. My hearings from yesterday posted. They are great entertainment. They are free to watch. You, sh you should be paying admission for those things, but they're on, it's on the city's website, zoning citation hearings on YouTube. Have a good laugh. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I'll I will that. definitely have to go check it out <laughs> later. All right. Gotcha. Well, I'm going to shut us down. We're all done. Okay. All good right. Night, everyone. Good, night, good night. Thank you, everybody. Have a good, good night. night. Bye. Thank you.